about 50 registrations and I'll request all of you to just have a seat so that we can start. So uh, first of all, I will welcome you all on behalf of uh, Hamdard Institute of Medical Sciences and Research and I'm very thankful to Delhi Orthopedic Association for giving us this opportunity and I welcome uh, Dr. Ram Prabhu sir who is the past president of Indian Orthopedic Association and uh, he is the international faculty of uh, JESS. He is the man who started doing JESS and is one of the man who has really done a lot of work on JESS. Therefore, we are lucky to have him here. Uh, Dr. Lokesh Maratha sir has come from Meerut and he is also a very much experienced JESS surgeon and he will give you wonderful tips and tricks to how to do JESS with wonderful results. Uh, Dr. Santosh Singh has come from UPA. He is the uh, sitting secretary of UP Orthopedic Association. Uh, Dr. Shekhar Agarwal sir is also with us. He is Delhi Orthopedic Association secretary and Dr. Atul Vaish sir, he is the president of Delhi Orthopedic Association. I am happy Dr. Atul sir was the first one to come. I am very happy sir, thank you very much for coming even before <laughs> the organizers. In fact, he is one of the organizers. So we will start and I'll uh, request uh, Dr. Ram Prabhu sir to just start the session with the first talk. Thank you sir. Fall. I take this opportunity to thank Delhi Orthopedic Association, their office bearers, the president and the secretary, Sandeep and his entire team for requesting us to come and have this workshop. Jace has been very dear to us and we know that in very complex situations which the residents and the senior orthopedic surgeons they may have, the JS is going to be coming to their rescue. So the, in the first talk, I'm going to just introduce this, the principles and the philosophy of JS, by which you'll understand what JS is. Just as a beginning, can I ask who knows JS? Can you raise the hands, please? So good, there are lots of people who are absolutely beginners, so it becomes very easy for us to teach you about the basic nuances of JS. So JS, which is the full form of Joshi's external stabilization system, and incidentally, today is the birth anniversary of Professor Joshi, who has been the innovator of this system, the mini external fixator system. So what is JS, or what is Joshi's external stabilization system? It's a mini external fixator, why mini? Because we have cubes which are very small, which has diameter of 2 by 2 millimeters, 3 by 3 and 4 by 4. It transmits K wires which are starting from 0.8 millimeter to 4 millimeter. It also has small distractors. It also has small connecting rods. So that's why the whole system is extremely small and miniature. But at the same time, the work or the utility of this system is tremendous. It is extremely light. The heaviest of the construct in the lower extremity weighs about 350 grams. As against many of the external fixators that we use, they are almost weigh 650 grams to one kilogram. So it's a very light system. And it's highly modular. What do you mean by highly modular? Probably all of you know about Lego, you know about Meccano, which is there, the ch children use it. And they can actually use their own imagination and make it different construct from the same implant. So similarly, this has a high modularity. That means you can actually make different things, fix it, uh, fixators from the same uh, system that we have. And then, what do we do with it? We address various problems of lower and upper limb, whether it's a fracture, whether it's a dislocation, whether it's a compound fractures, whether it is 
complex fractures involving two or three bones. At the same time, we can also correct the deformities, which is also a hallmark of this system, and reconstructive surgery. So we can also have a plastic surgeon coming and helping us with some kind of flap. At the same time, we give them the stabi they give stability to the hand or lower limb with the help of this system. Another thing about this is extremely safe because it's a minimally invasive system and extremely it's a ease of application is so easy that one tends to become overconfident very soon in fact at the end of today's workshop i'm sure half of you will be trained and you will be using the system next week itself so there are there is a word of caution that you have to actually read the book understand how its systems works because you can't really even if the learning curve is very very gradual or we can actually learn very easy please do not become overconfident so as i told you professor joshi whose birth celebra anniversary celebration we are celebrating by this today's workshop he was a basic mentor for all of us i have had the opportunity to learn so many things of orthopedics for last 40 years that first time it was in 1979 that I did a hand surgery course with him and after that I was taken by his intelligence, his innovation, innovation and at the same time a great thinker and that thinking actually rubs on you and you start learning so many things on your own. His idea was to learn the principles and the philosophy. The technique can be learned easily and that's the reason why many of you will start modifying the construct immediately. I would request you not to modify the system because we have come to these constructs with a lot of thoughts, with a lot of failures in between and that's the reason why we have to uh, give you a nutshell of how these constructs are used. So how did this JS begin its journey? It started as a small clamping device from the switch of an electrical uh, club. So which was small clamping device to hold a fracture externally. So this, these link joints are the heart of the system which holds the whole K wires and it also holds the connecting rods. So it, from there it developed into a system which could manage so many different things of the fractures of the trauma and that is what you are going to learn today. And it ex also expanded into deformity correction, various deformities like club foot, radial club hand, burns contracture, post-traumatic contracture. So all these things also could be easily managed with the same system. And so this is a comprehensive system which we have, which we are going to teach you today. And this comprehensive system also has very minimal instruments and implant that we'll be using. So it becomes very easy for anybody, the residents or the junior orthopedic surgeon also to use it. So now this, is, this system is now not only in India, but so many, almost about 12 countries it is used extensively. Most of them are developing countries, but at the same time, we have this system being used in Australia, in UK, in United States, where we have done various operations and they are following it. By the same time, we have Myanmar, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, and also Pakistan, which is using this system. We also have a collaborative research which goes on with the Australian University and UK, where we are doing strength studies, etc. And this research still goes on. So if you see this, this was an electrical plug, and from which we realize that this small thing can be used as a clamp. So we have this clamp or a link joint, which is the basic heart of the system, which can transmit a K wire and a connecting rod on sideways like this, 90 degrees to each other. And the size of this will differ depending on the, uh, on the region where we are managing. And this has turned into a link joint. This is what the JS system is. I'm going to talk about it a little more in detail in the components. So this is the whole comprehensive thing, which has the link joint, the connecting rods, the K wires, and also the distractors. All this system 
is into this. <coughs> One other very interesting person, Professor Emil Kothari, he was a surgeon come anatomist, and he came in contact with Professor Joshi. Both of them were, of course, thinkers, very innovative people. And what his idea, just like Elisara was, the distraction histogenesis concept based on the Elisara work. So that is what the distraction of any soft tissue will allow the histogenesis or the new cells formation. That is what is very important in whatever the deformity correction that we do. And also the differential distraction that we do, especially in the club foot or the radial club hand, that also balances the soft tissues and then it forms a bone. Just like what you have seen, the limb length lengthening that we do, we lengthen the soft tissues and the bone follows slowly, slowly callous and it becomes a very hardened bone. So this expanded the concept for tissue lengthening in many congenital problems. And that is what we are going to teach today. So what is the advantage of JS design? It maximizes the construct stability the stability afforded by this system is tremendous. And at the same time, we do not make the system rigid because that is what will give a problem to any of the external fixators. That's the reason why AO fixators, Esculap fixators had a bad name over a period of time and they, they thought about that these systems were a non-union machine because these were very rigid and this is what we don't require. The rigid system is a uh, harmful to getting the union. And that's why this is a stable. Stable at the same time, it is also malleable system which allows the bone to have micro motion. It allows the bone to heal. So we have also the stress between the bone and the pin and that max minimizes the stress. That's why the chances of K wire loosening or pin track infection is less. Okay, and we'll, we are gonna teach them, teach you how we reduce the chance of infection and pin track loosening. And this loosening, which is again detrimental to our system and also detrimental to how we use external fixator is also very important. It's extremely versatile, as I told you. External fixator treats fractures that are inherently unstable. We know that we operate or we do anything only for the unstable fractures. Our whole idea was to make unstable fractures into stable ones and we have an anatomical alignment of this till the fracture unites. The injuries that we have many times are very complex injuries and we are going to have Dr. Rajesh here who is going to show you some ghastly injuries which of the hand which we are going to have manage them with Jace. And we really do not have any other system which we can systematically address these problems. The concept and the philosophy of Professor Joshi was, we have to develop a system and this system is absolutely Indian. Okay, so this system which can be applied easily by any surgeon. All of you tomorrow will be able to handle this JS and managing them on the fractures or complex situation. And even in the most remotest, in fact, we do these surgeries in the most remote areas where there is no electricity, there's hardly any water, so we have using this in the remote places like Northeast region, some of the places of MP, etc., where there are hardly any facilities. There is a district hospital, but we do not have facilities. So we know that the basic aseptic precaution, if you take, we will be able to manage this fracture. We don't have to send them to 200, 300 kilometers to the, to the bigger hospital. And it is, we don't say that this is the only system that we should use. This is an alternative or simple alternative to whatever system that we have. We have philos plates, we have various different curvature plates, we have nails, but we are saying that this also is a system where we, the cost is the factor, we, ha we can use this. And also, it allows minimal invasive techniques, so the chances of problems are minimal. If you think that there are go going to be any problems, you can actually remove this plate anytime. So the applications, we started with in a mangled hand, the thrasher injury, the roller injuries when the hands were crushed, there were multiple fractures of the proximal phalanx, distal phalanx, the fractures of the metacarpals, the wrist, etc., in which 
we really cannot give a functional position to the hand. So in this crushed and mangled foot and hand, we started using that in the beginning. But later on, we realized that many of the intraarticular and periarticular fractures also can be managed very easily and with excellent results at the end and excellent function. And we'll see them in many cases that we'll have it. So there we have so many people, speakers today who are going to talk about different fractures. So long bone fractures, intraarticular fractures, all those can be managed by this. And we know that we give a functional position to the hand with a with certain amount of flexion at the dorsiflexion at the wrist, certain amount of flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints, certain amount of flexion at the interphalangeal joints. And all this can be done with this stable construct so that we can actually do some flaps or skin grafting in the crushed hands. That is what we are going to so see with Dr. Sandeep and Dr. Rajesh. And another, these two important things are that it can change into a dynamic system to stable system or a static system by simply loosening the hinge. And that is what we are going to teach you, how to loosen those hinges. And we can actually start the moment that the fracture starts healing. The, perhaps the most important thing in this, the distraction, the compression, angular deformity correction, and the lengthening, all this is possible with the same construct. We have to just modify it a little bit here and there, but we don't have to make the, the whole system very complex. So some, something like this, this patient had lost three of his fingers in a very highly crushed uh, in a, a machine injury. And this patient with the stable construct that we are given him, he can actually do the dressing himself. He can clean the wounds with the other hand. So this is the thing that it becomes painless very soon and the patient can start using this. In certain fractures like this, we have given a position frame on the left side, diagrammatic is shown like this, and this is how the whole positional frame looks like. And this microcirculation starts healing the small wounds. We don't have to really stitch all of them. And many times some kind of skin grafting could be done on such things, and we can have a fairly uh, good looking hand, but which is functional. So similarly, if we to put this construct, we don't have to do a second operation to remove these K wires. We can do that as an OPD procedure, we can remove those K-wires as patient is sitting. So you can see this patient is actually sitting when we are removing this K-wires. You know, so he doesn't get pain. In fact, many times in the elderly patients where we have lots of comorbid problems, patients can't be given general anesthesia or some anesthesia. We have done these cases with the local anesthesia. We give local anesthesia to the skin and to the periosteum and pass the K-wires and do it. I, I will show you some of the cases which were done under local. And then we have got almost seven books on this, some of which will be shown today. And in case if you want to take that, because without reading, without understanding this whole thing, I would request you not to use the system because then you are going to land up with the problem. And mostly you will blame the system rather than your technique. So this is how uh, these books are done. And again, Professor Joshi's philosophy was Vidyadan. And that's why we have done more than 300 workshops by now. We do that free. But of course, um, you know, the students have to pay because the logistics are there. That's why we have to pay. But otherwise, we do this free. And the sale of these implants in the books, we put it on the research. And we keep on rotating those funds. in, in the. So, how, this is how the journey started and it continues though, unfortunately, both Professor Joshi and Mrs. Joshi are not there, but we also have the blessing of him and we continue to do this good work. We have a team of almost 20, 25 faculty members who are doing this JS all the time. We have done more than about 15,000 CTV corrections in very complex situation, the relapse, neurogenic feet, etc. We have also done various deformity correction and this is being used day in and day out in various district hospitals. So the Professor Joshi's whose signature is there here, sorry. He said that if you learn methods only, you get stuck with those methods. So that's why I don't learn the technique. But if you learn the principles and the philosophy of it, you can devise your own methods. And that's the reason why we have not patented this system. 
and if you are allowed to use this patient people have started copying this and we can we have allowed them to copy that this system so that it can be used with a minimal cost to all the patients so this is in the benefit of patients and surgeons so thank you very much that uh, this is the philosophy in case if you have any questions at the end of every lecture you can ask me anybody has any questions component if not then i'll go to the next lecture which are the basic components of this system <coughs> second <coughs> yeah yeah so what does jays have what are the integral part of the implants these are the five most important parts of the implant that we have we have k wires which range from 0.8 mm to 4 mm in diameter we have link joints which i'll show you they are small medium and large we have hinges which are uniaxial or biaxial hinges which i'll show you we have connecting rods again they range from 1 mm to 4 mm depending on the region that we treat and the distractor so these are the basic five components that we have so coming to the link joints this is the small link joint which transmits 2 mm of connecting rod or 2 mm of k wires this is the medium which which com, which transmits 3 by 3 mm and this is the large these large ones are used only in the lower limb or some pelvic fractures so most of the times it's a middle and the small joint that we are use, using depending on the age of the patient these are basically used in the pediatric cases also in the hand fractures so this is how the one hole is oval <coughs> one other one is round and there is one grub screw that is a screw which we tighten we have made it universal so that you can have only one 3.5 mm screw driver which can tighten all these link joints <clears throat> okay so these are this is what the grub screw i was talking about and these are these wires and connecting rods are at 90 degrees so that we can tighten both the things at one grub screw but we also have a universal link joint which has two grub screws at, at the end so that i'll show you that is used in some special cases so we have either allen key which is provided with the set or you have your own 3.5 mm screw driver which can tighten these grub screws so this is how we clamp those k wires to the link joint as a connecting rod through the link joint and this is how it is this is the diagrammatic uh, demonstration and this is how these k wires are fixed this is how i have shown from 0.8 mm to 4 mm similarly in the in the middle middle and large link joint that we can hold it one more connecting rod makes it little more stable than one rod only and this is how the same link joint can be used to lengthen supposing we have only 6 inches connecting rod then we want 12 inches of length especially in the lower limb then we just use this to lengthen that so there are certain uses that you can learn over the system this is what i was talking about universal link joint which has a grub screw on this side and grub screw on the other side so these two do not touch each other so they are separate they are separately put like the uh, the first link joint we used to have both the things together here we have separate then we have fish mouth link joint the advantage of this is supposing you have a construct made and you want to add on something so you don't have to remove those construct we can just add on with the fish mouth uh, distract a uh, link joint so that we can put this connecting rod and we can add one more with this so this is a specialized thing which is used for ctv and some complex fractures etc these are the uniaxial hinges this is how one you can loosen that hinge and you can make the whole thing dynamic and the same thing uh, we have a biaxial that means in two axes we can have these hinges then <clears throat> supposing you make the connecting rod in 90 degrees with this you have the third dimension given to it that means in one axis the x axis 
the y axis and the zero axis or axis all these things could be moved so three axis it could be moved and then we have supposing you don't have a hinge with you we can just put a connecting rod or a small threaded rod and put two link joints and we can make it into hinge that is it so we have different distractors now we have one static and one dynamic mode in that blocks so this blocks will allow us the distraction or the compression if you want to get it away and we have different threaded rods the m3 threaded rod the m4 and m5 that means the diameter of this threaded rods is 4 3 4 5 and the pitch is 0.6 0.8 and 1 that means every time you rotate that whole by 360 degrees you are going to either distract or compress it by 0.6 0.8 or 1 mm so this is how we have and we have provided a knob at the end of this distractor which has four 1 2 3 4 <laughs> numbers so we can we know whether it is 90 degrees or 6 uh, 180 degrees or 360 degrees that you turn because this is important especially in differential distraction in club foot then we have different sizes of the distractor starting from 50 mm to 300 mm <coughs> then in we have single hole distractor the double hole distractors we have fish mouth as i told you split block axial traction hinged distractors bone transportation so all these are different modalities depending on what you want so these are the single hole distractors double hole distractors and this is how the double hole distractors look like this is the dynamic block the static block and in the thicker ones the 6 mm rod especially when we use it for the pelvic fractures or distraction or bone lengthening we have provided one cylinder which prevents the bending of this rod because if there is a too much of a pressure the the whole rod starts bending and then we have fish mouth as i told you this fish mouth allows this distractor to be just put on the connecting rods and then we start distracting and then we have various modified distractors used for special purposes like bone lengthening we have axial traction so <coughs> these are the use these are the ones which are used for advanced uh construct which we are not going to teach about today and this is again bone transport distractor then we have distractor with the radio listen block you must have heard of a uh, peak material so we have this peak material things so that's why whenever we take the x ray we can have a radio listen blocks so that we can see the bone actually and this is not only radio listen but it is extremely light so this is how when we have used it in the thumb the distractors do not superimpose on the bone and we can actually see that distraction fracture could be treated it's only those rods which are which cannot be made into radio listen and then we have connecting rods which can be bent we make them into j we make them into 90 degrees and we have provided this uh two hollow cylinders which allows us to bend those or give them a different size so this is called j which is extremely useful in the hand injuries especially for uh boxers fractures etc and we can use them so we have connecting rods which are also of the carbon which are lightweight radiolucent and more strain so these are the carbon rods that we have provided this is again whenever you require a radiolucent connecting rod we can use it uh, very important that all this k wire that we use are not threaded we used to use them in the beginning but we realized the chances of uh pin tract loosening and infection was much more because it makes it the whole thing rigid and there are chances of infection much more so we use only smooth k wires which has trocar tip and that tip helps us in minimizing the friction between the bone and this k wires so the chances of heat generation is less chances of heat necrosis is less the chances of infection is less so we have different sizes of this 0.8 to 4 mm as i told you and another tip is that whenever you put a k wire don't put it directly on the skin and go to the bone make a small stab wound open it out with the hemostat put a k wire and use a minimal rotation it should be less than 300 rpm or 400 rpm go very slowly don't be in a hurry because if you use that <coughs> very fast because we have drills which have 1200 rpm use it with a high speed 
chance of heat necrosis are there and that causes a nidus for infection. And when you pass 2K wires and when we are going to make an assembly which we'll show you, we pre-stress. You may have heard this, we are doing this in the Elisera also. We do pre-tensioning, so similarly we do pre-stressing so that 2K wires actually hold the bones so that we can start using them or correcting the deformity. And every time the patient comes, may, maybe after two weeks or three weeks when you call them for follow-up, you have to see that these grub screws are tightened again because especially in the club food, etc., the child starts banging on that construct and the grub screws become loose. So it can happen in uh, that because ultimately it's an assembly which is mechanical. So we have a basic component, as I told you, we have K wires, connecting rods, we have hinges, we have various different link joints, J, and this is the spanner that you require. And you require a drill, even the hand drill will help us. And there are various different frames that we have for the phalanx, distal phalanx frame, we have for the metacarpal, for the distal interphalangeal joint fractures, we distract it or a static frame. If there is a small fragment, you use the J frame. This is for the metacarpal. This is for fracture uh, dislocation of the metacarpal phalangeal joint. We can use this. Uh, this is also used for the proximal phalanx. So these are unilateral frame, delta frame. We named it different so that you know what exactly is being used. And these are very useful frames, especially for the lower end of the radius. Uh, uh, Communicated intraarticular fracture of the radius. We can have that distraction. At the same time, the die punch fractures also could be treated with this overhead beam and small K wires piercing the K wires piercing those fragments. We have used this for a Montagia fracture, for the lower end of the humerus fractures, fracture dislocation or old dislocation. Fortunately, we don't get them now, but we used to get them very often in the past, three weeks old, four weeks old. So by simply differentially distracting it, we used to get this reduction. TBL plateau fractures, we have a helmet frame and pylon fractures. So these are all frames and we'll be teach, learning them during the course of the day. And we have this comprehensive boss, which is a JS implant that is given, provided. And this can look after almost 60 cases. Cost about 40,000, which is a minimal cost, which probably you would use the lower end of the humerus or lower end of radius fractures some implant that we get imported, which are more than this. So we can use this for 60 cases, and I would highly recommend you or the institution or the department to keep this with you so that it could be used any time whenever you require to use them. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we have a comprehensive uh, box kept here for your, uh, you can observe and see that, and also some of the books which have been kept. Any questions? <clears throat> Okay, thank you very I much. I think it was a wonderful talk, uh, Prabhu sir. He has explained everything from the inception to the indications where the jest can be used. So, I think uh, it was a wonderful talk, sir. If any questions are there, then uh, we can take it. You can also on the group, you can WhatsApp us the questions and we can answer those questions later on. Okay? Uh, now we will start with the inauguration of the function. We will take hardly 20-25 minutes to complete it and then we will continue with the other lectures and the workshop. Okay. Dr. Siddharth, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would now like to invite our organizing chairperson, organizing secretary and co-organizing secretary, Sandeep sir, Javed sir and Ove sir to please welcome our esteemed guests on stage. sir. Sir, please. How many of our uh, here PG students? Good number. So, as per our data, we are having almost 48 registrations of postgraduate students. That is wonderful, and I am happy that you all want to learn Jess because it's a uh, it's a forgot art. But I tell you, this is one of the best things, and it can bail you out from many things. So this system, either you are working in a teaching setup or you are working uh, in your private practice, I think this system should always be there with you. And it's not expensive at all. So you all can put it anywhere in any way. I'm sure once you all will start doing it, you may come out with many 
innovative frames which we might also not know and then you can do the uh, as ram prabhu sir said that we have already done some mechanical strength studies with the university in australia and still we are uh, doing uh, innovations in this art so you all are welcome you all can give us the suggestions you all can use it whatever and then we will definitely uh, take it into right thank you of our ioa welcome sir next i would like to welcome uh, dr santosh singh our guest of honor who is the secretary of the upoa welcome sir i request sandeep sir to please welcome him next our esteemed faculty dr ram prabhu sir please sir our national faculty dr lokesh marhata sir I request Sanjay Dhawan sir to please come on stage as national faculty. I request Javed sir to please welcome him. With a I request Dr. Rajesh Chandra sir to please come on stage as national faculty. Next, I would like to uh, call uh, Dr. Atul Vaishya sir, our president of the DOA, to please come on stage. Welcome, sir. Dr. Shrikar Sivasav sir, our uh, DOA secretary, sir, please come on stage, sir. And of course, Sandhya Kaushik, man, our workshop coordinator. Without which, it would not have been possible to conduct this workshop at all. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Sandeep sir to come on stage. I request Sandeep sir to please come on stage and speak a few words. Uh, good morning to the dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, and my dear students. I am very happy that after the spell of corona after almost two years we are holding this uh, workshop uh, we started this workshop almost in 2017 we did two workshops on jess then in between because of the corona we could not do it so this year we have started it again and we would like to do it every year right because i think this is an important aspect in modernization we should not forget this art of soft tissue preservation and minimal invasive surgeries with this, I will welcome all the dignitaries. I will welcome Dr. Atul sir, Dr. Santosh sir, Dr. Sanjay sir, Dr. Atul Vaish sir, Dr. Shekhar sir, uh, uh, Mrs. Sandhya Kaushik ma'am, Dr. Ram Prabhu sir, Dr. Lokesh Maratha sir and Dr. Rajesh Chandar sir. Today is a very, very important day for us because we chose this date because today is the birth anniversary of the invent inventor of Jess, uh, Professor B.B. Joshi sir. Uh, and this was really, uh, we thought earlier we were doing the next week, but then we thought it's better to do it today. So I'm very happy to conduct this course today. And I congratulate Mrs. Sandhya uh, Kaushik, ma'am. She is daughter of Professor B.B. Joshi, sir. And we are happy that she is with us. <laughs> now I'll ask Siddharth to just carry on with the inauguration. Sir, now I would request our chief guest and all our eminent guests to help inaugurate the ceremony and light the lamp. Please, sir.
este ya que I now request uh, Atul Shivastav sir to please come and say a few words. Good morning all. Thank you Delhi Orthopedic Association for the kind invite Dr. Atul, Dr. Shekhar, Dr. Mishra my dear friend and especially Dr. Sandeep the organizer for this just symposium. I was fortunate to be meeting Dr. Jivshi in person at his place long time back. And as Dr. Ram Prabhu so wonderfully mentioned the components and the versatility of this, let me tell you, my dear friends, all the youngsters sitting there, it is one of the most versatile tools in the armamentarium of an orthopedic surgeon for treating acute and chronic trauma and for deformity correction, CTV, etc. You got to use it to understand the versatility. And that is why we have gathered here today to learn the art of applying just fixators. It is, it is a wonderful, wonderful tool. You will see the cases and you are very fortunate. We have the best people in JESS in the country today gathered here, Dr. Ram Prabhu, Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Dhawan, Dr. Javed, Dr. Lokesh Maratha, they are the best people, Dr. Rajesh. So learn the maximum, grill them, grill them till the end, ask them questions. And as Dr. Ram Prabhu said, you will be able to apply just tomorrow. I was just wondering, Sandeep mentioned that we have 40, 48 PGs who have registered and we have another 52 people, so there are more than 100 registrations, which is huge. So to all the PGs, I would say, we have Dr. Mr. Ramesh Pandey here, the CAO of the IOA, Indian Orthopedic Association. He's got the membership form. Can you raise hands, how many are PGs? That's great. Are you all associate members you love? Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your blessings for this event. I now request Sandeep, sir, to please uh, give a memento to sir. Next, I request our guest of honor, Dr. Santosh Singh, sir, to please come on stage and say a few words, sir. Thank you. I will, first of all, I would like to thank to the Delhi Orthopedic Association and the organizers of this beautiful Just Workshop. I am honored to be here with among the top faculties of the JESS as I have started 20 years back when I was the PG student and learned about the versatility of the uh, JESS. 
then uh, i met with dr joshi in so many workshops and see the keen uh, observers uh, observership of this jazz so it is a very wonderful um, instrument and uh, basically the principle is uh, which dr ram prabhu has highlighted this you should uh, be more focused on the principle than the instruments as instruments are the need of uh, innovation so you must learn the things which is going to be teach by the our learned faculties especially the ram prabhu sir and we are very lucky to have these so thank you to the dr sandeep for organizing this wonderful workshop and thank you to the all the organizers thank you sir now i request sandeep sir to give a token of gratitude next i would like to invite our national faculty dr ram prabhu sir to please come and say a few words thank you very much uh, we have done so many workshops but i see the enthusiasm which is unique here and i see the faces which are wanting to learn uh, that's a great uh, sort of inspiration for us to teach you more and more and just like one day workshop we have two or days workshop where we actually do this um, hands on on all the different modalities and in mumbai we have bombay orthopedic society which does we do five days workshop where we do live surgeries almost 20 to 30 cases where each and every delegate is allowed to operate along with us so this is what we do that is only once a year that we have through bombay orthopedic society and uh, it's glad i'm happy that all the dignitaries from ioa from delhi orthopedic association are here and so many post graduates and i think it's a great moment for us that so many post graduates have come here to learn this technique and i'm sure at the end of the day you will be enlightened to learn this wonderful technique thank you very much thank you sir i request sandeep sir to please give a token of appreciation to sir next i would like to call dr lokesh maratha sir to please come and say a few words sir good morning friends really it is a great pleasure for me that today we got the chance to pay tribute to the legendary figure dr b b joshi on his uh, birth anniversary and that is in the form that nearly 50 pg students have registered for this workshop his motto was uh, vidya dan mahadan so we got a chance today to teach our young orthopeds his principles and the methodology of jazz today thank you very much the organizers and the president elect uh, ioa dr atul uh to be here today in this meeting thank you very much thank you sir i request dr sandeep sir to please give a to uh, dr javed sir to please give a token of our appreciation next i would like to invite sanjay dhawan sir to please come and say a few words um i'll uh, also welcome dr apurva agrawal sir from ghaziabad and dr rk mishra the vice president of delhi orthopedic association to the thank you sir for coming very good morning it's good to see the enthusiastic young budding orthopods coming to jess because when we started jess was very much in and i tell you this is a technique when you start doing it you will start improvising it more and this is a technique is a bail out option we can have is every i think every orthopedic surgeon should have and should know and should learn this because at times when nothing works this just works and when you start using it you will start improvising every now and then so and i think i don't want to waste much of your time i welcome you all and we'll see in the workshop thank you i request javed sir to please give uh, sanjay sir a token, a token of our appreciation next i would like to call our doa president dr atul veshya sir to come please uh, come and say a few words
गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डी ओ ए आई वेलकम यू ऑल स्पेशली वी आर ऑनर टू हैव विद अस टूडे प्रेजिडेंट इलेक्ट इंडियन ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन डॉक्टर अतुल श्रीवास्तव सर थैंक यू सो मच एंड द लीडर टूडे फॉर द टीचिंग प्रोग्राम आवर पास प्रेजिडेंट इंडियन ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन डॉक्टर राम प्रभु सर I also welcome in a gathering of orthopedic surgeons uh, three beautiful ladies sitting in front of me Dr Mrs Sandhya and Mrs Ram Prabhu and Mrs Martha Maratha Friends uh, I was introduced to this Jess in the year 93 94 sir you will be surprised and it was introduced to me by a plastic surgeon Dr Devansh my good friend he was as a visiting plastic surgeon to my hospital and at that time it was used to be with general surgery but because he used to have 8 9 10 hours of surgery and i being the junior most i was posted with him for surgeries and then he introduced me to this just fixator for the first time in post burn contractures and in post traumatic contractures and once i got so beautiful results with good physiotherapy just jess is one part which i learned from him was after putting up the jess healing of the wounds the physiotherapy part is very important you will get the functional results only not by putting the hand in a functional position but getting a good physiotherapy under your personal guidance if you just send it to a physiotherapist the f the function will never come so from there th at that time only mumbai were carrying these just uh, workshops and especially for the we started it for the ctv one workshop i attended in mumbai especially only for the ctv when people used to dare getting operated <coughs> with a small kid on the medial side you are operating and just used to give wonderful results but slowly gradually with newer implants with lock plates and all this art was dying and i am thankful to the hamdard research hospital and dr sandeep and his team dr javed for organizing this symposium and this workshop and i tell you once you go through this workshop as dr prabhu said it's a simple system it's a cost effective system it's a very very easy to learn system and can be performed by an average orthopedic surgeon in a periphery level we used to do it simple blocks we never used an anesthetist for foot and uh, foot and hand surgeries for these just so today i wish you all a very very learn good learning experience with my esteemed faculty i feel that it will be really a great uh, workshop to attend and i wish all the best to you and i th once again on behalf of doa want to thank the organizers especially dr sandeep and dr javed for organizing this workshop for us thank you so much thank you for your blessing sir i request obey sir to please show a gratitude to sir next i request uh, the secretary of doa dr shekhar sevastav sir to come please say a few words good morning everyone and i think uh, everything has been said before so as secretary of doa i welcome all of you for this meeting and i hope that uh, you will get benefited from this uh, on behalf of the association i also thank uh, the respected faculty uh, dr atul shivastav sir uh, dr ram prabhu sir and all the learned faculty who are here to conduct this program uh, good a big thanks to uh, dr sandeep and his team and the hamdard institute who took this task on behalf of doa to organize this program and uh, we are really glad to see the uh, gathering here and the enthusiasm which is there so thank you very much and uh, hope we'll have a very great workshop thank you thank you sir i request obey sir to please uh, give a moment to to sir next i would request uh, mrs sandhya kaushik Ma'am, to please come and say a few words on the stage. 
she's our workshop coordinator she's been coordinating all the hands on workshops for us Uh, hello and a very good morning to all of you. I have a bad throat. So <laughs> I'll just say a few words. I'm sure Dr. B.B. Joshi must be somewhere up in blessing all of you. Uh, and I'm sure his blessings are going to go a long way and you will have a good learning experience of his work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I request uh, Oye, sir, to please give a memento to ma'am. Next, I request... Atul sir, to please come on stage and give the memento to our organizing chairman and organizing secretary, organizing chairman Sandeep sir and organizing uh, secretary Dr. Javed Jamil sir. Please sir, come on stage. Next, I request Dr. Ramesh Pandey, sir, to please come on stage. And I request Dr. Atul, sir, to please give a memento to sir. I request, sir. Sir, ha. Atul, sir. Pandey ji. I request Atul, sir, to please give a memento to uh, Dr. Ramesh Pandey, sir. Mr. Ramesh Pandey is always a force for the IOA. He has been working tirelessly for more than 25 years for the Indian Orthopedic. And most of you will have to contact him for <laughs> IOA membership. Okay? Thank you, Pandey ji, for coming. I once again reiterate, he has the membership forms. Please do fill them. It is for your benefit. Don't wait for tomorrow. Do it today. Thank you. Uh, I request Atul sir to please give a momento to Ove sir, who is our co-organizing secretary. I request Sandeep sir to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Rajesh Chandra sir. I think we end with the inauguration uh, session. Thank you very much for all the dignities coming from long distances to grace the occasion. Thank you very much, sir. Now we'll continue with our uh, academic activities. <laughs>